TikTok, that's a thing these days, right? A pretty substantial thing, it seems. And I've been looking through TikTok and I've been looking at farmers and the videos that they put out. And it's very interesting to see how the farmers use those precious few seconds you get on TikTok to convey their message. I just like to chug milk. One, because I like milk. And uh, I like to see people drinking milk. One, because it's good for you. And I think more people should drink it. And it, it tastes really good. So this is just my support for that. Uh, me campaigning for that. So, uh, And so I thought to myself, why not do a video responding to farmers' TikToks and what it is that they say? And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. I'm going to go through a selection of different TikTok videos from a selection of different farmers and respond to what it is that they say about farming and about veganism as well. So we'll get into it in just a moment. But before we do, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different courses about a variety of different subjects. Now, in a previous video, I talked about a course from Penny Lane. And her course is called Filmmaking From Home, Turn Found Footage Into A Compelling Video. I really like this course because it applies directly to what we've been doing at Surge recently. And if you saw our recent Honey video, then you'll know that we've been using footage on the internet, found footage to create a narrative using a script to create a piece of hopefully very useful vegan advocacy. And so if you're a YouTuber or you wanna make YouTube videos and you wanna promote veganism, then I really recommend this course as a way of getting started. Not only that, but Skillshare are offering two free months of premium Skillshare membership to the first 1,000 people who click through on the link in my description. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get into it. This is the first video and it has 3 million likes and it is Milk just disgusting. Cow. Step one is pre-dip. Sometimes people say that vegan food is weird and all you're doing for vegan food is blending oats and water and you get oat milk. And this is what you have to do for cow's milk. I just can't imagine doing this, it's so weird. People say that vegan food is weird, right? But think of all the things that we have to do to these animals. This comes after the forced impregnation and after the baby's been taken away from the mother and the grief and the pain that, that causes to them. And then after that, you have to do all this creepy and weird stuff to the cow's udders to get the milk. And all vegans do is get some oats and water and blend them together and people say that vegan food is weird. But look at what goes into cow's milk. It is so creepy and so exploitative. I just don't know why anyone would ever want to drink that. I like, think about myself drinking it when I was younger. It's disgusting. Like, I'm so glad that I don't consume these things anymore. It's just baffling to me that people would want to. All right, so let's move on to the next video and it is of the same farmer. And honestly, this guy's TikTok page has got some weird content, like some creepy content, some really disturbing content. And this one, I just think is really sad. I mean, it's all sad, but this video here showcases a mother who's very clearly protecting her newborn baby. And you can see the way that she sat over her, protecting her and using her head to keep distance between the farm and her newborn baby. And this just shows how deep a connection and deeper bond that the mothers have with their babies in the dairy industry. And this mother may be protecting her baby because she knows this farmer is gonna take her baby away from her. She's protecting her baby now, but maybe within a matter of only a few hours, this farmer or another farmer on the farm is gonna come and take that baby away from her mother. And you can see just how protective she is. I think it's just horrendous. I mean, just look at this. I can't believe that people can go up to these animals and see them doing that and still take their babies away from them for milk. Like, come on, it's so ridiculous and it's just so disturbing. Then 2020, we still do these things to animals, even though we can so clearly see how protective and caring they are over one another. Like, it just makes me so disappointed. And so let's move on to the next video. And this is a farmer in Canada and she's not best pleased about vegans and she definitely doesn't like pizza. So let's watch this video and see what she has Morning to say. TikTok. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit more about this horrible company, Vegans. If you're vegan, I love you, you're awesome but find better sources because they are pulling stuff out of thin air. What is this? Farmers electrocute gas and poison their animals and then peel their skin and fur off? Are you kidding me? Have you? No. Why? This woman's TikTok is all about debunking myths and standing up for the ideals and realism of farming. And so she's used Peter here and it's kind of this irony, isn't it, where she says, like, don't trust this organization because they're a vegan organization and so they're gonna be biased against the reality of farming. Instead, trust me because I'm a farmer and I won't be biased 
towards farming, right? But I actually agree in the sense that we shouldn't just take what's said by an organization on face value, but we should use what's said to research further and see if what's been said is true. And if she'd actually done that and taken the time to research into what Peter was talking about, she'd have seen that they're probably talking about fur farmers, which is why they're talking about gassing and electrocution and the peeling of skin. And so if you just took the time to research it, rather than thinking you're debunking myths, you'd have realized that you're not even talking about what they're talking about. But a bigger point is they are talking about skinning and gassing, and although they're talking about fur farming in this particular tweet, it does actually draw parallels to what happens to animals in the meat industry. In the UK and Australia especially, or Europe in general, gassing is one of the most commonly used forms of slaughter. It's used for pigs and poultry. And actually when we talk about leather and sheepskin, how else do you get these products from the animal other than peeling it off their body? And so yes, they're talking about fur farming, but some of the things they're talking about do apply. She talks about, we love our animals. You don't love your animals. You sell them to be slaughtered and killed for profit. The bottom line is they care about them as little as is required to make a profit from them. That's the bottom line. That's as far as it goes when it comes to farmers' compassion for these animals. But this TikTok is not finished yet. There's a second half to it. So let's get into it and see what she says in the second half of this video. Do you know what saves even more animals than this? Knowing where your products come from. If you know where everything is coming from, you are saving so many more animals. Yes, there are still some bad companies out there that aren't good to their animals. If you start shopping local, you're ensuring those animals a long, happy life. I'm confused. She does know these animals are going to be killed, right? She knows those egg-laying hens who laid the eggs that she is now consuming or advocating to consume are going to be killed in slaughterhouses and the male chicks that were born alongside them have already been killed. She does realize that. Right? I don't understand the logic. She shows a tweet from Peter saying, go vegan to save 200 animals a year. And her response is, no, that's not gonna save 200 animals. I know it will save more animals. Buying animal products from animals who are going to be killed, that will save more animals than not buying animal products from animals who are going to be killed. There is absolutely no logic at play here at all. And the whole local farming absurdity. Oh, people always like to talk about local farms. But every farm is local to someone. Even the worst of the worst in her eyes is local to someone. And why does geographical location mean anything in terms of what happens to the animals on these farms? And besides, the problem of animal exploitation is not about these single isolated incidences. It's the systemic and systematic problem. It's the legal practices that are also abusive towards animals and they happen on every farm. And let's run with her argument for a second. And let's say that me and her, we decide mutually on a farm that we both agree is really terrible. And then I move next to that farm. So that farm is now my local farm. Does that now mean that the farm that we both agreed is terrible is now ethical because it's my local farm? This is the absurdity of the local farming argument. Every farm is local to someone. So therefore that must mean that every farm is ethical and all the things that happen to animals must be wonderful in those farms because those farms are local to someone. What does geographical location have to do with anything that happens to animals, especially when the problem of animal exploitation is the legal stuff as well as the illegal stuff. So let's move on to the next TikTok video and it's the same farmer, the Canadian farmer, and also she likes to take pictures of rodeos. And she thinks that what happens to animals at rodeos is amazing, including when the calves are roped by their necks for sport. Wow, what a wonderful thing to do for animals. And this video again proves just how desensitized she is to the suffering of animals. Just watch this one. Here's something I never thought I would hear. Ear tagging is apparently cruel now. The amount of comments that ranchers get on their pages saying, well, can I put one of those in your ear? I mean, sure, I already have a few, but I could use a helix on the other side. And what people don't realize is that when you're tagging those calves, Bear, may I use you? When you're tagging calves, we're gonna use a dog as an example, you feel inside their ear to see where the least sensitive part of their ear is. So you can see there are different veins and whatnot in Mr. Bear's ear. So you would tag in a spot like that Thank you for your assistance. So that's what your ear tag does. It's gonna prove his identification. And that's just making sure that you're not gonna hurt your calves when you're tagging their ear. Of course, it's gonna feel like a bit of a pinch. It's just like us getting our ears pierced. Wow, what a crazy world we live in, right? Where people are against doing things to newborn animals that hurt them. Like, who would have thought that we'd live in such a world where people are against causing unnecessary pain to newborn sentient animals? I just can't believe it, right? But don't worry, because the farmers could tag the ears in a more painful place. Like, they could do that, 
but they specifically choose a place that will cause the least amount of pain. Because remember, farmers are super altruistic and care about their animals, which is why when they have three choices, one being cause the most amount of pain possible, the second being cause significant pain, or the third being cause no pain, they choose option two, causing significant pain. Because to cause no pain would be so crazy and extreme and weird, right? But don't worry, they love their animals, which is why they choose to cause them significant pain. And it's funny how when she shows her dog, her dog's ear is not tagged. Strange that, isn't it? I wonder if she'll do a video showing how to tag ears by doing it to her dog. I would imagine not, and there's probably a few reasons for that. One, because she doesn't want to cause pain to her dog. But she'll say that's because she doesn't need to identify her dog with a number because her dog has a name, which is an interesting point because she treats her dog like a pet. So she loves her dog and she won't sell her dog to be killed for profit. But the animals that she sells for profit, she says she loves them, but she commodifies them and reduces them to a number, that number which she then staples through their ear when they are newborn animals. But remember, the animals she farms, they're not pets, they're livestock, and so they deserve to be referred to as a number, and they deserve to have pain inflicted upon them, even though she would never inflict that pain on the animals that she loves within her home. It's so strange that. And it is so disingenuous that she then points to her own ears and talks about the piercings that she has. There's a glaring difference there. And the glaring difference is you consented to having your ears pierced. The newborn animals who you mutilate, because that's what it is, a mutilation, they don't consent to it. It's not something they want to do, and it causes them pain. Now, if you want to make a comparison between a human and an animal in this situation, the more apt comparison would be to compare piercing the ear of a newborn baby and ear tagging a newborn non-human animal. And guess what? We don't think it's acceptable to tag the ears of newborn babies because it causes them pain and they can't consent to it, which is exactly why people are against you ear tagging newborn non-human animals, because it causes them pain and because they can't consent to it. It's the same logic. All right, so let's move on to the next video and it's Huey again doing something really strange on his TikTok as he likes to do. And in this one, he has got some mother cows lined up who he's milking and yeah, he's just gonna pour that milk onto the Oreo and eat the Oreo. This is so weird. That milk that he's taken from the mother was meant for the mother's baby, of course. That's the purpose of why cows produce milk to feed their child. He's taken the baby away from the mother, and now he's pouring the milk that would be drunk by her baby onto his Oreo to then eat it himself like he's this cow's child. Sometimes I just think that farmers should stay off social media, but in a way I'm glad that they don't because it's good for people to see this, to see how weird it is. Like, Why would you ever want to consume anything from this scenario? It's so exploitative that we do this to sentient beings and then we reduce them to something that we can commercialize for TikTok and make a 15 second video from to get a few thousand likes. All right, so let's move on to the next one and it's Huey again. This cow's been working for a little bit. Gotta make sure all is good. Easy girl, you're not making it easier on me. Come on it's now. just two legs and a head. All right. This farmer sees nothing wrong with showing him lubricating his arm and inserting his arm inside a cow, penetrating a cow with his arm, restraining animals and then forcefully penetrating them. And then people have the nerve to say that vegans are weird or extreme. Like what's extreme? Growing lentils or growing oats and blending them with water or forcefully penetrating an animal to make money from them. What is more extreme and more weird? For a cup of tea or coffee or to pour in your cereal, we'd restrain sentient beings and then do this to them? Like it's so disgusting. I can't wait for the time that we look back and it'll be soon, but I cannot wait for the time that we look back and just hang our heads in shame that as a society, we allowed this to happen and paid for it to happen and defended it. All right, so let's go on to the next video, which is this one. Since almonds, do not lactate. There's no way for us humans to actually get almond milk. It is almond juice. The thing that's interesting about farmers now complaining about almond milk or oat milk being called milk is that we've had products called those things for such a long time like coconut milk. It's been around for so long, right? Or shea butter or peanut butter. These products have been around for ages and farmers never complained about those. They were never worried about people mistaking peanut butter for being a dairy product. But now all of a sudden, these products have come along that are actually damaging their industry and will eventually make their industry completely irrelevant. It's already happening. And now they're saying, oh, you can't get milk from oats. You can't get milk from almonds. Okay, fine, call it what you want. Call it almond juice, call it oat juice, call it soy juice. 
Call it what you want, it doesn't make a difference. The reality of what it is, is it's the future and it's the thing that's gonna make your industry completely irrelevant. It's gonna destroy your industry and it already is. So you can argue about, oh, is it milk or is it juice? It just doesn't matter, it's so irrelevant. The point of the matter is, it's the thing that's gonna destroy your industry and it's already happening. And so complain about what it's called all you like, but it doesn't make a difference to what's inevitable. And I don't think companies like Oatly that were just valued at $2 billion and seen their profits just completely skyrocketing are worried by an industry that's complaining about labeling because your industry, the profits are just declining. And as soon as those subsidies are taken away and those bailouts are taken away, which will be soon, it will be null and void. And that's the reality of it. So honestly, complain all you want and talk about how it's not real milk and milk comes from animals, blah, blah, blah. It just doesn't matter. It's so irrelevant because what is certain is that these products, whether they be juice or milk, are the ones that are gonna take down your industry once and for all. Right, so this is the next video, and it's again from Huey Be Cool. And the reason I wanted to show this video is because I think it's really deceitful and disingenuous that he's claiming that what he does is fine because the cows walk themselves to the milking parlor. There's a few reasons why that's the case. And the first reason, and the main reason, is because you've selectively bred them to produce excessive amounts of milk, which places a huge amount of strain on their bodies. They're producing up to 10 times more milk than they would naturally in the wild, so you can make more money from them. And so this extra stress means that they want to be milked. Of course they want to be milked. Every female mother wants their offspring to drink their milk. That's why they're producing the milk. And so these cows, yes, they want to be milked. Well, they have to be milked because it causes them pain and distress to not be milked. But it doesn't mean that they're willfully consenting to their own exploitation just because they walk themselves to the milking parlor. That's so deceitful. And look, everything you do to these animals, you take their babies away from them, even though in a previous video, we showed how that mother was protecting her baby. You still took her baby away from her. And then you say she's consenting to this exploitation because she walks herself to the milking parlor because she biologically has to be milked. How can you say that and not understand how disingenuous and deceitful you're being? And then you're gonna send her to a slaughterhouse to have her throat cut. And you're gonna say, well, it's absolutely fine for me to do that because she walks herself to the milking parlor. And so this is the next video. And the reason I wanted to show this video is because it further reinforces how deep that maternal connection between mother cows and their children really is. And so in this video, what we have is from a farming page is we have a mother cow who's lost her child. And now she's mourning her child and calling out for her child. And the farmers are saying that she's not been the same since her child died. Now in the dairy industry, it's funny because dairy farmers love to tell us that, oh, don't worry, dairy cows are terrible mothers and they don't even realize their child's gone and they definitely don't grieve with them. There's no problems there. But what we have here is a farming page, beef farmers, who are talking about the fact that these cows do have deep connections with their children. They do mourn them. You can speak to ex-dairy farmers who will talk about the fact that it was so horrible for them to take the babies away because it was so obviously tormenting for the mother and her child. I mean, the mothers call out for their babies. They call out for them and they grieve the separation. Anyone can obviously tell that that's true, but dairy farmers will say, no, 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 that's not true. Let's completely just ignore biological factors like the fact that mothers need to raise their children and emotional factors. Let's completely ignore all of that because it doesn't suit the dairy narrative. But as soon as you strip away that facade, of course these mothers grieve for their children. It's so obvious. And what we have here is a farming TikTok just confirming what we already know to be true. So let's move on to the next video. And this is from an Irish farmer who's not very happy that people say that animals suffer on farms and he thinks that farmers are the real ones suffering. Let's see what he has to say. Um, this is a video for anyone that wants to say that my animals suffer on my farm. Um, as you can clearly see, they don't. Oh, well, that proves it then, right? There's some cows grazing in a field, therefore there is no suffering. Here's a split second shot of some animals in a field. All of a sudden, I'm reconsidering being vegan. Like, I had no idea that animals grazed on fields. Apparently, all the suffering I thought existed doesn't because of this half second shot. Anyway, let's see what else he has to say about farming. No, in response to that, uh, if you want to know about suffering that goes on on farms, don't talk to a farmer's... Uh, talk, don't talk to a farmer about his animals. Talk to him about him or herself. Talk to them about their joint pain, talk to them about their back pain, talk to them about the sleepless nights during calving season, talk to them what it's like to wake up in the middle of the night, have to go over and calve a cow, then you're sitting up all night for the cow because the cows have a difficulty, call on the vet, the vet comes on, then the, the calf is born, the calf comes out still born because you couldn't do anything else to help him. Talk to a farmer about that. Talk to a farmer that has lost half his cows to TB. Talk to a farmer about that. Talk to a farmer that's watched his animals suffer very much, very badly and ended up having to put it down. Talk to about that. But see, you won't, because you see, you think that we are these little horrible people that just beat and attack and just are cruel to our animals, and we're not. 
Oh, these animals are a life source. These animals are a life. My apologies. I didn't realise that the job that you consensually take part in made you more of a victim than the animals who were unnecessarily exploited against their will and who end up in slaughterhouses with knives being pulled across their throats. I now realise that was a gross misjudgment of me and that in this situation, you are the true victim. You see, what I used to think before is that when the farmers picked up the newborn calves and walked off with them, that meant that the newborn calves were the victims. But now I realise it's actually putting so much strain on your back and it must be terrible for your knee joints to have to pick up a newborn calf like that. I now realise that in that situation, you're the victim. And I'm very grateful that you've highlighted to me the fact that you have joint pain. And that therefore means that you're the one who's really suffering in this industry. I now realise that the joint pain that the mother cows feel from the fact that they carry excessive weight because they've been selectively bred to produce so much milk, I now realise that that's insignificant. That doesn't mean anything anymore because you suffer from joint pain as well. And so therefore your suffering must be so much worse because at the end of the day, you get to go home and you get to live a nice life and do what you want. And that must be really really hard for you. Unlike these animals, right, who have it so easy, don't they? They live a life where they've been selectively bred, are forcibly impregnated, have their babies taken away from them, and then end up in a slaughterhouse with a knife pulled across their throat. What an easy life they must live compared to you. I'm so sorry. I didn't realise it was so hard for you to exploit sentient beings. And it's so disingenuous to make out that you're a victim again because a cow might have a stillborn, or cows might be killed because they have TB. You're not the victim in this scenario. If a cow is killed because they test positive for bovine TB, you're not the victim in that situation. Has your life been taken from you? No. So how can you be the victim in that scenario? And the reason that farmers, or the reason that you yourself, are upset about a stillborn baby or about cows being killed is not because of the death or the cows being killed because you make money from cows being killed normally. That's how you survive. You sell the milk and then you sell the bodies. That's how it works. And so it's not the death that upsets you. It's the loss of income that upsets you. If a baby is stillborn, that's a baby you can't make any money from. It's not the fact that they're dead that you care about because if you cared about animals dying, you wouldn't work in an industry that makes money from animals dying. And you wouldn't put them in situations where they die in the first place. So again, you're not upset because an animal has died. You're upset because you can't make money from them because they have died. And to further prove that point, what happens to a cow on your farm if she becomes infertile? What happens then? What happens to a cow on your farm if her somatic cell count won't come down? Two situations where the cow is perfectly healthy, there's no bovine TB, there's no problems like that. What do you do with an animal if they won't get pregnant or if their somatic cell count is too high for you to sell the milk? What do you do to that animal? You kill them, you cull them, you send them to a slaughterhouse or you shoot them on the farm. Again, it's not the death of the animal you care about. And just because you call a vet out in the middle of the night doesn't mean that you're some benevolent caregiver for these animals. You do that because you want to make sure you can make money from the animals. And a dead baby means you've wasted money on the resources throughout the pregnancy. It means that you can't make money from the baby. And if that baby was a female, that's a lot of money you could make from her. But you can't now because she's stillborn. You're not a benevolent, altruistic caregiver. You're someone who makes money from exploiting sentient life. And that's why you get upset. And again, I'm not going to sympathize with you in this situation and say the farmers are the victims because they can't make money because an animal has died or been killed against their will. The animals are obviously the victims in this scenario. And until the day that you're the one who's sent to a slaughterhouse to have a knife pulled across your throat, it will always be the animals who are the victims and not you. Because at the end of the day, your life is not at peril and you may get back pain and joint pain. And I don't doubt that farming takes a physiological toll on you, but you consensually agree to be a farmer. You don't have to be a farmer. You can leave that job at any time that you want, but you consent to being involved in that job. And you're not the victim there. And you consciously send animals, knowing that they will end up on the kill floor of a slaughterhouse in fear, with someone about to pull a knife across their throat. And I do think it's important to note that I don't think that you're evil. I definitely don't think you're a victim, but I don't think that you're evil either. I understand that you were raised in a family that taught you that from the moment you were born, farming animals was acceptable. And I understand that we live in a society where people pay you to do what you do, and so why would you question the morality of it? I understand that. But unfortunately, the way that you were raised doesn't mean that what you do now is acceptable. And if we objectively take a step back and we look at what we do to animals, and the fact that what we do to animals is completely needless and causes them suffering and exploitation, for what? For you to make money and so that other people can drink milk? when they don't need to, or it's damaging for their body and bad for the environment, why stay in that industry? Why not make a change? Because you've got nothing to lose from changing, nothing at all. All right, well, let's leave it there. We've gone through a lot of TikToks. 
and uh, there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of information. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you like it, let me know and I'll make more like this in the future. But I really appreciate you guys watching and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring. I hope you're all safe, I hope you're all doing well and I will speak to you all in the next video.